but I'm always going to make sure technique wise that everything looks legit because just because you want me to loosen up doesn't mean that I'm just going to look completely soft and I make it right. just look completely bad at the same time. Yeah. Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. You're watching Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. I'm TK Trinidad, and today we have an amazing show, and of course, nothing but an amazing guest, an amazing returning guest. She is the new MLW World Featherweight Champion, the kick demon herself, Janai Kai. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good, good. Oh my gosh, I think we interviewed you maybe like two or three years ago and so much has yeah. changed. Um, <laughs> just seeing you everywhere. Um, but first, like, like, let's just talk about the greatest news of all, champion, MLW yes. featherweight champion. Yes. Uh, how is right that feeling? Um, it feels great. I have it sitting right here, right behind me. <laughs> um, it feels great uh, for sure. I have had my eyes on MLW for a while now. Even like when I first started training, I got introduced by MLW from my trainer. Mm -hmm. And since then, I really kept my eye on them. And then once they started making this featherweight division happen, that's when I it really got me curious and really want me to like get into it. So um, yeah, because you're like the third person who's held this belt, so it's fairly new. And I remember mm -hmm. um, talking to, I believe it was Casey, like when MLW was first kind of introducing women into the to the mix of things. Um, so what is what is it like there? So I mean, there's a lot. It's there's a lot of male wrestlers. So what is it like there as far as like who's going to be your next opponent, or who do you have your eye on, or is it a traveling belt, or what's what's the breakdown of it all? Um. Well, for the featherweight division, it looks like they are trying to build more and like there's more women that are, are like backstage than I thought because they have like the fusion tapings. So they have some, uh, some of the women coming in and doing that as well. And it's really cool to see that because I really see something, you know, growing when it comes mm -hmm. to the featherweight division. And, you know, as far as like defending it and everything, I mean, I'm all for defending it anywhere. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Selena is like really the one in charge. So we'll see what, what she has in mind as well, because she always comes up with some sort of idea. So I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I was. Um, yeah, I was just literally checking out the promo video, the MLW drop with you and Selena. And it, it's it's top tier stuff. I, re I really like the combo and I feel like there's going to be a lot of stories, a lot of storylines that uh, she she's going to put you in um but your kicks are crazy so you're going to be <laughs> going to be fine but this kind of leads me to i don't think you could pull back the curtain a little bit cuz you know you do have a sect of people who are not necessarily wrestling fans who watch who see wrestling and is like oh that's fake your kicks don't look fake at all um <laughs> they look very legit um and you're seeing contact so what is that as you know the person who's receiving the kick yeah, have they told you anything, you know, over the years? Like, yo, you you need to lighten up on the kick, or what? Or they just take it, or what's the what's that like? Um, it's a little bit of both. Usually, when it's somebody telling me to like loosen up, it's the person not taking the kicks. <laughs> and what like, my opponent usually is like, that wasn't as bad as it's actually in the safe spot. It's, it's like perfect. It's like if you took a chop basically mm -hmm. even though chops aren't the greatest to take but it's still not reckless it's not yeah. reckless because there's a difference between being snug or stiff and then being reckless um but i always i'm a good worker i listen so if there was a case where i had to loosen it up or whatever for sure but i'm always going to make sure technique wise that everything looks legit because just because you want me to loosen up doesn't mean that I'm just going to look completely soft and then make it right. just look completely bad at the same time. Yeah. No, you definitely look like a, a I mean, you're, you're trained for people who don't know, go back and, you know, look at your body of work. You're, you're trained before you were trained in, in wrestling. So that's always a good thing in itself. You're trained um, beyond wrestling and Taekwondo and stuff like that. Um, so with that being said, do you find now, because you've been in wrestling since 2018, do you find yourself going back to those um, 
those martial arts components and kind of pulling out different elements and applying it to your character now? Yeah, a hundred percent. I I still do that. I still like uh I like to watch martial arts movies and I like to watch fight scenes and stuff like that because it's very helpful for me too to kind of see how they do things because it's mm -hmm. kind of similar. I always I also wanted to be a uh, stunt worker, like I wanted to do martial arts movies, and mm -hmm. they pretty much do a lot of things similar to what we do in the ring when it comes to like working like all of the hits and everything. Yeah. But yeah, I always take note on just how they move and how they just the different combos. And I keep trying to set up like some of my move sets and like make it even better in a way where it's definitely like someone's watching a martial arts movie or something in the ring. Yeah, no, it's um, it it looks even down to your gear. Um, before we get into that, as far as the stunt training, like, is that something that you're still pursuing or is wrestling kind of taking up most of your time? Uh, wrestling's definitely taking up most of my time. Like I, I have friends that I did Taekwondo and stuff with who are doing movies and everything and doing like mocap mo for like Mortal Kombat and stuff like that, which is really cool to see. So I would like to one day maybe try it out, you know? I did do mocap for like a uh, 2K and that was a mm -hmm. cool experience. So if I could do like more of that or like just try and see how it is to do like martial arts movies or in that, in that whole industry, then I would definitely do it. But um, yeah, wrestling is definitely taking over everything, but I'm enjoying it. And my friends that are doing the stunt work and everything, they've hit me up and they're like, they think it's so cool that I'm doing this. And they also let me know, like, if you're ever interested, just let me know. <laughs> and that's good. Yeah, networking is key. So that's a good thing to have if you want to kind of segue into that. Um, but that goes into, like, um, your gear. Um, I am not, like, I'm familiar with gaming, but not, like, a lot like that. But your gear kind of looks like it's a, like, it comes from some type of, like, gaming of some sort. So um, is that the case? Or how do you go about designing your gear? It's so funny how you mentioned that because like my next gear is going to be inspired by a specific video game character. It's a okay. fighting game. So, but yeah, I kind of look at that and then I try to some influence of like when I was growing up, like with Taekwondo or like with Muay Thai even, like I try mm -hmm. to do like the, my bottoms, like the Muay Thai skirts or like where like the uh, bands around my, my biceps, like right here. Mm -hmm. Like I, that's like a Muay Thai influence. So I try to take little things from my martial arts background. Okay. Um, so you have a quite, you've wrestled quite a few people. Um, I saw an interview where um, I think you had mentioned that Chelsea Green kind of saw you when you were first kind of starting out. Um, mm. As far as that, cause like I said, you've been around since 2018. It, it, I think with the pandemic, it I don't know, it, it makes it longer or shorter. I don't know, but it, you've been around um, and you've been doing a lot. So for people like Chelsea Green or other people who've been in the game for a long period of time, have they reached out to you as far as like, like, yo, you're doing well or have they given you any advice? Yeah, like uh, when I saw Chelsea, when I did Ring of Honor and had the match with her, like that was definitely a time because I was talking to her about it. I'm like, wow, like you saw me at my first ever class and now mm -hmm. we're here. Like, but like when she first saw me too, before that, um, she was, she knew like she was like, Yo, like look at you like you're doing so great blah, blah, blah. like I love talking to her too like I, mm -hmm. I feel like I can talk to her about anything um so it's always great seeing her and especially like how she's doing now yeah very sure so has she given you any advice or anybody else uh who's been like a uh been in the game for a long period of time kind of giving you advice that you take with you I always think about the little things that Santana Garrett would say when I first started um, cause she definitely made sure that we were taken care of, like even on the business side of things, mm -hmm. not just the, the in ring stuff, like the basic stuff. She really made sure to even invite us to specific shows, even some of the MLW shows that I was telling you about earlier. She would invite me to those shows cause she was wrestling there and she would also hit me up to see if maybe I wanted to do like a little spot in a show and I would go on the road with her 
and she would tell us stories and even give us some like business tips at the same time. So nice. the little things that she would tell us, I would always remember. Yeah. I mean, it's so funny. I just uh, was talking to somebody today about um, carrying their, their belt and how um, when you're carrying your belt and let me know if this is the same thing applies with you because you have a belt now. Um, mm -hmm. You, you uh, carry it on carry on versus checking it, obviously, because you don't want to lose it. But if you have multiple belts, like how does that all work? Like, so all these little like tips that you don't, the average person doesn't think about because, you know, oh, yeah. you know, so um, are, are there any tips that you got where you're just like to this day, like you're, you, you kind of live by like, oh, I'm so glad that, or something that you've learned along the way as well. It's funny how you mentioned that because I had that experience this past weekend packing my title because I was like, oh, let me bring it just in case, you know? So I put it, yes, in my carry-on because I knew for a fact I'm like that too. I even put my gear in my carry-on, like I don't check it in. And so the one thing that I kind of wish people told me was you might get stopped at TSA because <laughs> every time I put that that title through TSA, they would stop it. Like, I was like, oh man, what is it? And then they pulled out the bag that the title was in and they looked at it and they're like, okay. That, and that happened both times from when I was getting into the state and then I was leaving. I was mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh. Like no one told me that that would actually happen. Like TSA is gonna stop you. So it's one thing to put it as carry on, but you might right. get stopped. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's something that how the title is made and there's a the specific thing, thing in it. Yeah, because I know there, like a lot of titles are different. It's not made mm -hmm. the same way, but something about that title that people want to stop. <laughs> so that's one thing for sure. I can't really think of other things. Like it's, you learn along the way for sure. Like you definitely learn a lot more on your own. Um, You will get advice here and there and that's just mm -hmm. based on other people's experience, but you definitely learn more so like on your own. Yeah, I mean, it's so <laughs> I'm just envisioning like passing through TSA and they're like either the guy who's like checking the thing, sees the belt and like he knows what it is or what are their faces when they pull it out? And you're like, yeah, that's like I, I kind of look away. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of look away when they're like about to open it. The first lady, she was just like, you're good. Congratulations, by the way. And I was like, OK, thank you. And then like the, the second lady, she just looked and said that I was good whatever. But yeah, I kind of just look away and it's like normal about it. I don't really say anything, but yeah, it's it's just funny just to see that that's the thing that they were stopping me for. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it, it is crazy. Um, now, just a little touch, a little bit on your family. You said that your dad was uh, in the military. Um, mm -hmm. Did when you think military, and I know a lot of military folks as well. When I think military, I feel like they're very much in order, like, you know, even down to, you know, how they make up their bed and clothing and stuff like that. Did you take any of those kind of habits from your dad into beyond wrestling, just the sport, martial arts in general? Yeah, like with everything needing, needing to be in order definitely was a thing. Like I still make my bed till this day. Like, <laughs> like I do it all the time, so um even like little chores like that for sure that I keep in mind even like if we're at the dinner table it's just acting right like that he he was always about that um so but he didn't like massively discipline me like he he wouldn't act like you know we're at boot camp at home at all or anything right. he he was like always fun to be around still um but yeah like I think for sure I take a, like the way that I'm disciplined though, and the way that I act when I'm out and about is definitely has to come from like that side of things. Gotcha. And you said something about the dinner table. Like, is there a way to like, do you guys, like, <laughs> when, when you reference that, what did you like, what happens? It's, I know it's just like the normal things like don't burp or like, don't have oh, gotcha. your legs up, like sit up bright type right. thing. It's just more so of that. Uh, because he knows like if we act like that at the dinner table we're gonna act like that you know in public right. around other mm -hmm. people so he really made sure that we were like that way especially as gotcha. little ladies like me and my sister that we were right <laughs> no no yeah that that i mean that's what should be 
we talk. But yeah, I definitely, I definitely <laughs> get that. Yeah, my household was like that too. Didn't have military folks, but they, yeah, they weren't allowing you know slouching or any of that stuff. Yeah. As I was yeah. Up properly. <laughs> yes. um, so it's it, it it is it's funny how those habits kind of shape us, and then um, I think those habits also help um, carry on into like martial arts or sports or stuff like that, because you already have that kind of discipline. So it's easy to, you know, respond to the coach or a trainer or stuff like that. So yeah. I can definitely um, see how that would be beneficial. Um, now, the first title holder for um, the MLW featherweight was Taya Valkyrie. She um, is now signed to, oh, she's, I mean, she's everywhere, but she's signed to uh, AEW. She's done a mm -hmm. lot. Did she reach out to you or has any of the, I mean, obviously you bet you beat the second title holder, but you know, has any, but when you, uh, when you, um, when you won, was there anybody who reached out to you that you weren't expecting? No, no one that I wasn't expecting. Um, I know that like Santana made, a, made like a quick little emoji comment when she saw it, um, as far as like any of my trainers go. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, my, one of my other trainers, too, also, like, shared that post and said um, something around the lines where it's, like, it's it's nice to see, like, they, how things are going, like, just to see my journey and everything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I got, like, comments like that from, like, my trainers. Um, yeah, but I, it was over it was like an overwhelming amount of people that I wasn't actually expecting so many people to show that much love. I don't know mm -hmm. why. It was just like shocking to me because I was like, oh, wow. Like, because a lot of people shared it on social media and everything. Yeah, it's huge. But it was just like the things that people were saying and like, I was just like, oh, wow. Like the support is like crazy right now. Like I didn't honestly did not expect it yeah i i think because you were you have been just consistent in what you do like when you post um your social media it's like it's very it's very much on brand what you do and yeah. you know you're going to different stuff like that so people are it's kind of like almost like you're like the, the silent killer it's like, so people are seeing that stuff. Like you're not like boisterous about it. Like, oh, look at me, but you're posting and yeah. people are seeing that stuff. And then like, you know, th there's the payoff. So it's like, damn, like, yeah. Like <laughs> she's been, it's not yeah. like you came out of nowhere and all this other stuff. So, cause that was like, when I saw the post, I'm like, like, this is well-deserved. It's not like, you know, and no shade to anybody who just came out of wrestling school, but it's like, you've been putting in the work. It's very obvious you've been putting in the work and we've been seeing you everywhere. Um, so I think that's, might be the genuine consensus because consensus because that's what i felt it's like yeah. she's been kicking people she's been kicking a lot of people <laughs> over, over, yeah, over I'm, very, I'm very much to myself to make sure that i know that i even know that i'm working hard and doing what i need to do um and i try like i don't mind doing doing things myself and like i try to be on top of on brand with my social media and everything so that makes a lot of sense that you say that. <laughs> yeah, you've been you've been really um yeah, and it's it's oftentimes um I think in this era you have the and there are people who have those personality types. So don't like not you, but people who are watching don't take it like oh it's a bad thing. But you have people who are like look at me, look at me, look at me. Um, but it's you know sometimes you see the people who just been quietly working, like you <laughs> yeah. see them working. You just see them it's yeah. just quietly working. Like you don't. It's not a, a yell type thing. So yeah, it's definitely, yeah. You know, that's what I picked up. So definitely kudos to you. Thank you. So the game, so MLW is here. Um, you're going to different events all over the place. What is what is on your to-do list? Like who's on your to-kick list? Do you have like a kick list <laughs> or what's the name of your list? I guess you can call it that actually. Um, I, I still have some people in mind. Um, as far as like goals towards the end of the year, I don't really know. Um, I know I'm making a couple of new debuts, which is cool, but also like with MLW for sure, I want to continue to up my game when it comes to like, kind of like a TV type atmosphere. Cause that's how they work. So that's like mainly what I'm thinking about is showing 
TV kick demon Janai Kai because everyone sees me at the indie shows, but they don't really know how to be on camera like that. Right. So I think it's that time for sure. And this is why everything's happening with like me and MLW. Like it's time for me to showcase that part of me. So that's what I'm really uh, focused on right now. Yeah. When I think of um, like the indies versus like TV, obviously there's the cameras there, but is there a difference between like, for instance, you did AEW Dark, you've done ROH, you've done um, Women's Wrestling Army, and now you have MLW. Are they similar as far as tapings? Or is it, uh, or, or there's a difference between all of them? So I will say Women's Wrestling Army, like since uh, Maria came fresh out of like the older Ring of Honor at that time, mm -hmm. she did things similar to how I did Ring of Honor with um, how they would work like even backstage segments and working individually with the wrestlers, like with the talent mm -hmm. and trying to focus on how they can showcase this talent and the talent in different ways. So, and I really appreciate that, but that's what kind of what she did um, with MLW. I see, I see that as well. And I really appreciate that. Like they, they help and guide, especially the ones that they know that don't, that don't have TV experience. They try to help and guide them in the right direction of like how to do these segments or mm -hmm they guide you on what to say or around the lines to say, or say it in this way, like, or how, how does your character typically act? And then they help you with the creative side of things. Mm -hmm. So that's like, uh, all three of them are kind of in that way, which is really cool. And that's what I mean, like where I want to keep working on that part. Cause I want to keep working with pe pe people of like, you know, TV experience and that want to help me creatively. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of, I'm, so Selena's been with MLW for a long time and she also helps out with backstage. So how did that pairing, um, how did that pairing happen? Because one thing that um, I didn't know, which I was watching another inter interview, is that um, you're Afro-Latina. So mm -hmm. was that like a combination? Was that one of the reasons or how did that, that happen? How, like, how did the pairing happen, I should say? I honestly do not know how it happened, but it did make a lot of sense to me in that way too. Um, with just like the whole crew in general with Rocky Romero and Jesus Rodriguez, like I think just as a whole, since we all have that, you know, Hispanic background, like it works. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I didn't expect it to be that way. Like, I just rolled up and like, said Selena's gonna basically be your manager I'm like oh like but I've been like watching like MLW like I said and like I've seen her work and everything and it's mm -hmm. great it's so great and I like to work with somebody like that especially who's good on the mic and everything because that's like another thing I would like to keep working on as well especially for like my character yeah because you don't you don't really know what to expect on for the kick demon when they get on the mic so right. it's kind of like it's even so for me like i feel like i could surprise myself but at the same time like i don't know like we'll see what happens we'll see what we can do you know i love it um when i saw that last promo it made me think of um paul Heyman and brock lesnar where <laughs> he's like yeah she will beat the crap out of you and here's a video of her beating everybody else and then I feel like as time progresses, because like Brock, <laughs> Brock Lesnar now, <laughs> hilarious. And you, you would not have expected that years ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I don't know if it's because he's older and he just really doesn't doesn't give an F like, yo, y'all know who I am, like that type of stuff. But I think um, being around somebody who's, I, I agree, she's definitely like amazing on the mic. Like you're gonna mm -hmm. start picking up stuff, and you're gonna we're gonna see mm -hmm. in like a couple of couple of years, or even next year, you're gonna see you're gonna. I think you're gonna surprise yourself when you take the mic. Yeah. Like, oh. No, because like women's wrestling army was help was having me talk a lot backstage too, mm -hmm. and I like the style. There's also different styles of talking, and you know I don't want to be too hype, or I don't want to be like too like old school, you know like Hulk Hogan talk like I, yeah. I I you know it's just like I'm being 
Janakai is me. Like, I'm being me, but, like, how do I put, like, a kick demon type style into my voice, like, when I'm talking? I don't want to be sound too demonic either, like, with the right. like, trying to make a leap, like, you know, <laughs> like, you know, like, just an evil voice. Like, how can I make, what style of talking can I do as me? So, yeah, that's I'm what thinking- I'm, I'm mainly focused on <laughs> when it comes to all that. When you say that, I think uh, Keanu Reeves. I don't know. That <laughs> just didn't make because you know how he's very like consistent, like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Keanu, but he's like very consistent. He's Keanu throughout all his movies, but yeah. very just kind of there's a little bit of grit in there and stuff like that. I don't know. For some reason, when you said that, that's what that's what I thought. Like just very, you know, you don't know what he's gonna do because like are yeah. you are you not? I don't know. Because I, I I mean I can. I feel like I shouldn't even be talking like this if I was on TV. This is how mm-hmm. I regularly talk, you know. But for some reason, like, I even notice at R- Women's Wrestling Army, like, I do have, like, a little bit of, like, cool attitude when I talk. Mm-hmm. And I'm very, like, precise and to the point. I don't talk for too long. I right. have, like, a good amount of time of talking, and that's it. Just get to the point, and that's it. And I want to fight. That's it. <laughs> like, I don't talk too long or too little. Um, there's been uh, certain cases where they have me like say like just little things, but because they want me to be that silent killer type thing. But you know, I don't mind that. But also, mm-hmm. I want to practice if I have to say more. <laughs> Very true. So with um, Women's Wrestling Army, um, I think I saw Maria a couple weeks ago, maybe a month, couple months ago. Um, so she didn't know when it was coming back. Has there been any news as far as? Uh, it coming back at all? Oh yeah, I don't, I don't know as well. Like all, all of us ladies, like I've been seeing the other ladies I've been on the show. Like I've been talking to them about it too because we love women's wrestling army. <laughs> like we loved being there because mm-hmm. of the fact that, like, they were literally working on all of us, and we felt like we were blooming into like and really seeing who we were. Mm-hmm. So we definitely hope to see it back if anything, soon. Okay. With that being said, you like you uh, said that you got like some talking time and you were able kind of to perfect uh, perfect the craft. Was that mm-hmm. through like Maria? Was Maria working with each and every one of you guys? Yeah, she was working with each of us. Um, Cause we did a lot, we did a lot of backstage segments. Like we even did interviews cause she was doing like documentaries as well. Um, mm-hmm. But just like, the the pre-match promo the post-match promo whatever else segment um she did she does like focuses on certain matches like for example it was me masha and jordan blade in a triple threat and they did like a whole type of like kind of like a ufc style like interview like promoting the match Mm -hmm. So, like, they, like, interviewed us before the match and how we feel and everything. And then, like, it would go to the match. So, like, she would even do things like that. And it was great. Because it it also helped us, like, talk during a situation like that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I mean, she's she's a veteran in the game. With her, was, as far as her, like, you know, having you guys talk, was there any any advice or anything that she kind of, um, gems she gave you that you're like, oh, man, I didn't even think about that? Yeah, well, yeah, there's, like, a lot of things, like, maybe she didn't even say it, but it's just, like, from what I've, like, if I'm just observing, um, because, like, I I see, like, the way that she works and the way that things are done, and so I I try to keep in mind of those things, but what really helped is that she, like, even some of the other staff members who have worked with, work with us, like, on the promos and everything would let us know, like, just think about it. Like, how do you feel? And all right. And then, like, they wouldn't rush us to start the promo or anything. they will be like, how do you feel? And then they kind of help us with it. And they're like, do you feel angry? Do you feel like this is your moment? And you're like, yeah. And it's like kind of like a pump up type thing. So now I do that talk with me, like with nice. myself. So even like before I have to do like any type of promo or anything, or before I go to the ring or if I'm just having those moments where I feel stuck or I don't know where things are going to lead I kind of like ask myself questions like that well how do you feel what are you going to do about it 
like things like that is that that kind of helps me go to the next step of things. Nice. I mean, it's it's so yeah. Just even talking to her for a few minutes, it's just like she's been in that game for so long. Um, and even mm -hmm. that self talk, it's like almost like she produced you, and now you kind of created your your inner producer when you go and do yeah. things. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so let's, let's talk about PWI. So PWI, you were uh, ranked two uh, thousand two hundred and uh, <laughs> two hundred five, two thousand five. Yeah. I mean, either way, it's a good list. Uh, two hundred fifth <laughs> on PWI. Uh, what was that feeling like? Because it's two hundred fifty women. Um, and like, even when we interview you the first time, there wasn't, I feel like the amount of women wrestlers has like, I don't know, quadrupled oh, over yeah. the last couple of years. Um, so, you know, what's that feeling like to be on that list? It feels great. I mean, yeah, I was on it last year too. I kind of went down a little bit, but um, I know for a fact that the moves that I've been making I'm, I'm very satisfied basically with myself. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like I look at the number, I'm like, okay, cool. Like I'm still getting recognized in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm happy that like they even like listed some of the things that I did, even like with my Japan tours and everything. So again, I just also remind myself of like how far I've really gone within a year. So yeah. It feels great for sure. And then like seeing other ladies on there that haven't been on it, it's also nice to see too, because it's like, we're really building something here. And I think I, I forgot who I was having this conversation with, but um, I was saying that, you know, I like to look back at like old shimmer days and everything and like really study off of them. And with how women's wrestling is now, I feel like, we're really creating more history, mm -hmm. more history. And like you said, the amount of women's wrestlers have probably quadrupled. It's like, yeah, we're creating more history and more um, studying material for ladies in the future to watch yeah. us. So it's just overall cool to see that happening. Yeah. I mean, if somebody wanted to take, I, let's say the last three years I, I don't know i wonder what that was do you think it was it started really um exploding before the pandemic or coming out of the pandemic i don't know there's something that happened i mean there's there's clearly enough women's wrestlers um when mm -hmm. we started to interview like we had i think interview almost every week for 30 or 40 plus weeks so there's <laughs> clearly enough women's wrestlers to interview um, beyond like the main, you know, the big promotions. But if, for some reason, it's just kind of like, um, I, I don't like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if we, we were like, we missed a lot of people. Or I don't know if like just people started popping up, but it just feels yeah. like the last three years, it's just like, wait, there's, yeah, I, there's so it many It makes women's. me wonder too where it came from. Cause I know there was a time where like, uh, Total Divas was coming out and like a lot of the women got influenced out of that and wanted to start. Mm -hmm. I personally, like I've been wanting to wrestle since I was 13, mm -hmm. but that one push where I was like, I could really start on this now was um, when I saw a Mae Young classic happening. That's oh, okay. when I was, yeah, that's what really like pushed me to be like, all right, Janai, like let's go try this out. Cause this is, pretty cool to see i wasn't watching like indies but mm -hmm. this is when i was just starting to get back into watching wrestling and then i saw may young class and i'm like you know it's still kicking me kicking me in the gut right now to wanting to do this so i'm gonna do it yeah. um so it's like i like like you said like was it like something during the pandemic like like that because it, it definitely blew up even more but mm -hmm. still it's like Again, like really cool to see. And like a lot of them are growing so fast because there's even some women out there that I've been wrestling for two years and then they're already going to Japan or, you know, so like it's just like the uh, the competition and the athleticism of all the women like showing up is crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's and, it, and there's more. I mean, you look at I mean, obviously we have like, wow, and we have Mission Pro and we have Women's Wrestling Army, like all that stuff. I mean, WoW's been been around forever, but like, and then Shimmer and Shine and stuff like that. But it seems like 
even if you look at like NXT and them showcasing so many women, like it's just like, it seems like there's just way more opportunities. So then now you're seeing more women and there's more promotions and promotions are not no longer doing like the two minute, you know, one women's match, you might have two or three women's matches. So there's, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know what well, that, that is interesting. I'm going to definitely like research that. I don't know because we were just <laughs> all locked down. We just went to a wrestling school and decided to wrestle. I don't know. It's, 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 it's interesting. Well, another thing, I think another thing too, and I forgot where I heard this, but like during like the pandemic and everything, when it came to sports, wrestling was on, like WWE was still going. The only one. So, yeah. So, yeah. So maybe like they didn't have anything really to watch. I don't know. And they were watching WWE and they, yeah. you know, I mean, that's, that's how a lot of uh, podcasters, a lot of wrestling podcasts started because yeah. they were watching wrestling and, you know, NFL was, uh, NFL wasn't on, hockey wasn't on. Um, yeah. I think NBA had the bubble later on that year, but we still had like nine months of like, like nothing but wrestling. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, maybe that's, yeah, maybe that's the thing too. Um, but you did mention Japan and you went over to Japan. Uh, what was that experience like? Cause it wasn't a very long stint. So do you plan on going back again? Yeah, I was there. Well, I was there for two months and it was, it was a good experience. Like this is actually my third time going to Japan this year. And this was my longest time being there. Mm -hmm. And I would love to go for a, even a longer time. Possibly like I would possibly like to go like maybe with like another company or venture out more maybe back to like tjpw or whatever i'm not mm -hmm. really stuck on one company so i would like to go back and you know definitely be there for longer because that was my overall goal since day one it was to wrestle over there and like to really just make a name for myself over there so would you consider your style like um like a, a strong style yeah, like a lot of people would say it's strong style. Uh, yeah, very similar to how a lot of them work over there because there's a good handful of them who have a martial arts background. So mm -hmm. they like, and a lot of people told me right off the bat when I first started training that they see me working really well in Japan just because like how I was kicking a lot and everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I would say it's like strong style. I don't know what what else to really call it. Um, I'm just like more striking base, more more of that. I don't do like much grappling. I could, mm -hmm. but like definitely more striking base. Okay. And what's your training like? Like, do you because it's like you do the martial arts and you have the wrestling. Um, is it a combination? Do you also do like the gym lifting today? Like, what's because I, I feel like every wrestler I, I speak to, it's it's not your standard. Like everybody's so different. Like I know, like you know, um, some people do parkour, which is like, wait, what? Um, so like, what's your what's your um, training style? I definitely mix it up, like you said, um, and I try to really focus like getting my upper body strong because uh, I did have neck surgery, so I want to make sure that I maintain the strength up here. Mm -hmm. um, and then like, I of course love doing mitt work, like martial arts, striking mitt work. I always need to do that. Cause it always keeps me like sane. like, and it also reassures me that I still got it, you know, because mm -hmm. it, it's no joke when you do martial arts training. So that's like a real good test for me to see if I have good cardio as well. Cause you know, in ring cardio is no joke too. Mm -hmm. But I I don't have a ring nearby me all the time. So I kind of rely on like my martial arts training to see like where my cardio is at. Yeah, there's nothing in a better feel. I, I, I've been Muay Thai and boxing on and off for years, but there's there's no better feeling than with Muay Thai when they're holding the mitts and you just do that. Was it the sidekick? And it just pops. And then like <laughs> trainer's happy and you're happy and you feel like yeah. it's just all a good you know, and then also I, I enjoy when um it's like somebody new is holding the pads and they don't realize how strong like my legs are and it kind of hits them back a little bit. I like that feeling too. That's, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause yeah, my <laughs> lower body is like, it's very strong. It's like, they don't expect it whatsoever. So yeah. I tell, I always tell them like, hold it strong, hold it strong. Cause like if you're light, it's going <laughs> to hit you in the yeah. face. 
Yeah, and, and then they never do, and then they learn their lesson, yeah. and then they readjust, yeah. and that second oh, right away they're holding, <laughs> they're holding right away. a little bit more. <laughs> um, so um, I, I won't keep you too much longer, but you know we're heading into 2024. Um, you know, you did mention that you want to go over to um, Japan some more. I mean, obviously you have the MLW title. Um, is there anything kind of going into the new year that you're like, I definitely want to kind of accomplish this? Um, you know, for sure. Um, travel more. That's definitely on my list. Um, there's some companies around that I definitely still have my eye on that I would like to work. Um, some of them I worked one time and like, I haven't been back in a while, but I would like to go back. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's like kind of what I have in mind. Um, and again, going back to like the whole TV thing, like I'm not in a rush to like get signed or anything like that's I've always been patient about that mm -hmm. like I've done I've done the uh the dark and the elevations and all of that but I never took that as like all right this has to happen now like I just took that as all right cool I got this experience some eyes on me for sure mm -hmm. um but Janai let's keep doing what you want to do keep working hard, doing your thing, you know, and that'll happen when it happens. But yeah. in the meantime, I get to, to work on more TV, Janai Kai and all of that, you know, and then if that opportunity ever comes across again, where they can really offering something or anybody on TV, I'll be a thousand percent ready. So, you know, I, I always don't think that I'm a hundred percent ready to, I'm right never thinking like I'm never like satisfied with my work or anything so that's how I'm always going in with everything that I do yeah it's it's a work in progress um do you find sometimes that um some promotions don't know how to um place you if that makes sense because mm -hmm. it's like it it seems like it's very martial arts based obviously because of your martial arts background and then mm -hmm. it's like also you're afro latina and also like all these all these things and do you feel like when the promotion like kind of picks you or they're trying to figure it out like are they trying to figure it out or is it very clear cut i think it's that they're trying to figure it out um i do have a different style though so i don't completely believe that like there's no spot for me Mm -hmm. um, I, I know for a fact that I, the way that I move, the way that I do things is just way different. So mm -hmm. I think what it is, is like the actual spot, like storyline segment, wherever that I would fit in their company. Some of them have figured it out for sure. Mm -hmm. Like when I went to Japan, they knew what they wanted to do with me. MLW clearly knows yeah. what they want to do with me. So you know, some people like like have an idea. It's just, I think it's a time thing. I think they're more concerned with time because maybe they mm -hmm. have a lot going on too. Where they're like, oh, I don't want to, you know, bring this person along and like put them in something that's just like not good type yeah. thing. Because I think we've all seen it where like someone joins a company and then like you're kind of like confused as to what they're doing with this person. And it's not even the person's fault. It's like yeah. definitely them like, rushing everything you know so yeah, right line. i definitely think it's more so of that just the timing yeah speaking of timing though i just realized in the last maybe two years so we have you champion at mlw we have trin champion at impact we had mm -hmm. bianca champion wwe we had jade champion aew before she left like as far as like black women champions it's oh, like yeah. it's in it, like that's insane like just to think about it because like yes you're th your third you're the third one who's have held this championship but mercedes too mercedes yeah yeah, yeah mercedes well like that's yeah. that's insane that's really <laughs> could you could you imagine when you started in 2018 that that would have even been possible. Like just speaking um, as far as like women of color, 
Um, mm -hmm. Like, did you think, did you envision that? Or not to say like, oh, I envision, you know, seeing all these black women hold these titles, but did you think it was even like possible? You know, that it's crazy how you ask that because it's like, you know, when it, like Mercedes and Trin did, le did leave WWE, there was a lot of judgment on that and like where they were going and like, look what they've done. And it shows mm -hmm. that like us women of color, we're going to work our asses off and we're not going to let anybody tell us otherwise. There, we're not going to let anyone try and like, to like tell other people like, oh, they, they just had attitude problems or like they're oh, hard gosh. to work with. All of, you know, all of those excuses and like, you know, just putting that type of thing on us, like we make sure that we show out. And even like with Jade, that's a good mm -hmm. example, which I had the pleasure of getting squashed by when I first went to AEW. She is a superstar and yeah. she didn't let anybody tell her anything else. Like, and look what, look what's happening now. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's possible and she's proving that as well so it's great and I know it's it's inspiring for me to see too because it because like I again like I work very hard I'm very like more quiet on the quiet side about it but sometimes like as women of color that's kind of what you have to do you know you're just like and we know how to keep our sanity and really mm -hmm. show out at the end of the day yeah you just you, you I mean you can look at at Trin and Mercedes like when everything happened they didn't they still haven't said anything like they didn't mm. they just kept quiet they had a game plan they did their thing and the next thing you know <laughs> like yeah you know it's so it's I mean, I mean with, even with, with with Jade and so like they I find um yeah I find like we can't afford to talk too much um we just have to put in the work yep yep yeah. Um, but it's amazing to see uh, your rise, and this is only the beginning. So I appreciate you for that. But um, yeah, you have a. I, I definitely want to. I thank you for coming on, but I definitely want people to go and support. So um, I know you have a Twitch channel, but there's any other stuff that people can, you know, purchase or what they can do to support you in your, you know, endeavors of becoming champions of more more belts. <laughs> um, how can I do that? Yeah, so I mean, as far as you know, merch goes. I typically sell my merch in person at shows, or once in a while, I will post like the API tens I have available, or just mm -hmm. gear that I'm selling. So, I would advise to just follow me on social media and you know see when I post those things. But I also have Patreon, which is Patreon.com/slash/JanineKai, and I post like blogs, vlogs, all of that stuff which I do like a lot of talking on there, a lot of, you know, long paragraphs on there, but you get to see like that side of me, you know? Um, so that's basically how I'm really asking to support. And again, yes, I have the Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash Janai Kai. Um, so uh, I'm going to be streaming a lot more and it's really fun when I stream too. I love streaming and I love like, watching matches on there, playing some video games here and there, but it's a good time. So um, definitely follow me on there. And then for the social media, it's Shania underscore Kai for X and for Instagram. Boom. There it is. Um, I want to thank you so much for coming on. I, yeah, I can't, I can't wait. I feel like Selena is going to have you, you in some <laughs> crazy situations and it's, it's going to be <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be great um so thank you thank you so much for coming on and thank you guys so much for watching my name is tk trinidad uh you can follow us on everything at uh ww talk pod check out our website www.talkpod.com thank you guys so much for watching women's wrestling talk the number one women's wrestling show on the planet till next time guys ciao women's wrestling talk the number one women's wrestling show on the planet